I was asked recently about a possible link between nutritional yeast and increased cancer risk, so in this video we're going to address this concern. Now it's true that we shouldn't overdo nutritional yeast, as we discussed in a previous video, with Dr Clapper gently warning us over the uric acid content and high vitamin B12 content of nutritional yeast. You can click the link above to watch that video. We also know that those with two specific autoimmune diseases, inflammatory bowel disease and hydratinitis superativa, should avoid it. As I did my deep dive, I found a video by a health educator stating that nutritional yeast is a neurotoxin, but I could find no scientific data to back up that claim. So what about the cancer link? Well, let's take a look at all the studies I could find that had to do with cancer and yeast. Now, nutritional yeast is a deactivated yeast, often a strain of Saccharomyces cerevisiae, and it contains a large amount of a specific compound, beta-1316-D-glucan, which has been widely studied, so what have scientists found? Well, researchers conducted an interesting in vitro study where they took excised tumours of breast cancer patients and using natural killer cells, which on their own normally kill off a small amount of tumour cells, they exposed them to yeast beta-glucans. And amazingly, they found that they became five times more effective at killing cancer cells. Animal studies have found that yeast beta-glucans caused a dramatic tumour shrinkage. But what about human consumption? Well, researchers of this study took 23 female participants with metastatic breast cancer and gave them a sixteenth of a teaspoon of nutritional yeast worth of beta-glucans for two weeks and found that they experienced a 50% increase in the number of monocyte white blood cells in their bloodstream, as well as a significant increase in their activation. Now, whilst this study's findings on patients with advanced cancer on chemotherapy, who were given a beta-glucan supplement and had positive benefits, were probably likely due to the placebo effect. There was one fascinating part of the study where a patient with lymphoma and enlarged lymph nodes in the neck, who delayed standard chemotherapy for four weeks during the study, noted a marked reduction in the size of the lymph nodes while taking the supplement alone. But again, this finding is likely just anecdotal. There have been 20 randomised control trials on the use of beta-glucans as an adjunct cancer treatment, which shows an enhancement of radiation and chemotherapy, resulting in a positive effect on the survival and quality of life. One particular study they cite found yeast beta-glucan supplements helped cancer relapse after surgery as there were no relapses in the treated group compared to roughly 1 in 5 in the control group. Even more fascinating, yeast beta-glucans were also administered to inoperable cancer patients. Only 1 in 20 patients of the untreated controls survived for 3 months and by 6 months they were all dead. However, in the treated group, 65% survived for more than three months and 43% were still alive after six months. So I could only find positive benefits when it comes to nutritional yeast and cancer. None of the claims I was sent could be backed up by data. But if you have any studies you'd like to send me, you can message me on Instagram. In my research, I did find one other condition people should be mindful of, and that's migraines. As yeast products contain tyramine, that has been linked to triggering headaches in some people who experience migraines. Next, we'll look at what eating bowls of quinoa and broccoli did to a doctor's cancer treatment. 